What's going on people in internet land? Kimchi Chris here and welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new episode of Rock Bliss with Kimchi Chris where we are looking at a brand new product from KISS. What a shocker. But we're not looking at just any product from the hottest band in the land today. That's right, we're not looking at the KISS caskets. We're not looking at the KISS condoms. We're not even looking at KISS Psycho Circus, the nightmare child for the Sega Dreamcast. And that's because we're looking at something we actually care about today. What a shocker. We are looking at the latest edition of the KISS Off the Soundboard series. That's right, the series of records that the band has been putting out recently that's the official release of official bootlegs from the band officially. That's because they just announced the latest volume in this series, that's right, Live in Poughkeepsie 1984. Now, I know I would be remiss if I didn't make a joke about the Poughkeepsie tapes here, but uh, that seems a little bit dark if you know what I'm talking about. But with that out of the way, this is a very, very important release, a very cool release, a very unique release, and a release that I think everyone in the KISS Army is really looking forward to because this release is a show that features Mark St. John on guitar. That's right, the formerly incarcerated, currently passed away guitarist of the band that only played two and a half shows with the band, only was on one record, and definitely is divisive when it comes to people's taste in his playing. Well, he's featured on this Mammoth release. So if you're keeping track at home, you might have noticed that at this point, the only lead guitarist in KISS that hasn't been featured on one of these Off the Soundboard releases or the Creatures box set over the last couple of years would be Bruce Kulik, which is just sad because I want one of these shows with Bruce. I want Hot in the Shade or Revenge. Maybe we'll get there. I have a feeling we'll get there. I know he's on a live three and of course the Unplugged record, but uh, that's not what we're talking about today. We are here to talk about Poughkeepsie 1984. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never heard this recording. <laughs> I have never have. I know there's some pretty bad little bits and pieces of various uh, recordings from the two and a half shows that uh, Mark played, but this one I'm assuming is of some quality or they wouldn't be releasing it. So that's, that's very exciting. It's a very historic show and I think the band knows that that's that's why this is coming out next it seems that they really are trying to touch on some unique shows with this series and uh, who could be mad at this who could be mad at this if you're a hardcore kiss fan if you are a casual fan you probably don't care but if you're really into the band this is going to be something cool to check out to collect to consume in every orifice of your body and since this is such a unique show let's check out the set list and see how unique it is so uh we have detroit rock city we have cold gin creatures of the night fits like a glove that's exciting. Is that the first official release of a live recording of that song? I love Fits Like a Glove. I think it's a great song. I'm excited it's there. Heaven's on Fire. Then we have a guitar solo, and uh, that's Mark. It's gonna be Mark. That's gonna be something interesting to hear. I, I don't really know what his solo even sounded like from that era, so it'll be very interesting to hear that. Uh, we have Under the Gun. Another very unique song to have in the set. Uh, that didn't really make it past this tour, did it? Was it on the Asylum tour? I don't know, but it's not a common song at all, so very cool to have it here. Then we have War Machine followed by a drum solo, which of course will feature Eric Carr. Can't be mad at Eric Carr being on an official release like that. Then you have Young and Wasted, but it is incomplete. So the source tapes, are incomplete on two songs. We'll get to the later one uh, here in a second, and that one isn't gonna really be a big deal, but it sucks that Young and Wasted is incomplete because that's a rare song to have in the set. They did keep it there for a couple tours in the 80s, but we don't really have an official live recording of it, so that's, that's too bad, but maybe if we get one of these uh, off the soundboard releases from Lick It Up or Asylum or something like that down the road. Maybe we'll get a full version of it. Of course, in the live setting, Eric Carr took over the vocals on it, so it's a very cool way to hear the song, but uh, we're only gonna hear part of it. After that, you have the bass solo, whatever. I Love It Loud, I Still Love You, Love Gun, Black Diamond, Oh Susanna. That's a very peculiar one. Oh, Susanna. Now, they were playing this at some of the shows around this time, but I'm shocked that they kept it on here, in all honesty. It just doesn't seem like something they would have put out, but uh, everything about this release is a little bit shocking and surprising, so I guess in the words of Tupac, they are really wanting to shock the people. And then we finish out the set with Lick It Up and an incomplete version of Rock and Roll All Night. I don't think anyone's gonna be too mad that Rock and Roll All Night is incomplete because we already have like 67,000 versions of that song between the original, the live versions, re-recordings, all kinds of stuff. So we don't really need another full version of Rock and Roll All Night. I don't think anyone would have been too awful mad if that was left off altogether, but it's cool that they are including 
what they have of the song at least to give us the most complete package of the show possible. And I'm sure just like with the previous releases, we will get some type of music dropped as a single, if you could even call it that, on Spotify as well as YouTube. So I'm sure that's going to be coming up pretty soon and I'm definitely excited to hear that as well as the full release. But I really think this release says something about the future of, well, these releases. I think it really shows you that there's a lot that we wouldn't even consider a possibility that they do have in the archives and plainly they're okay with putting something out there that has some songs that aren't even complete, which is awesome. Completely awesome. Maybe they could put some shows out that they just have tidbits of that are kind of different or strange in the KISS canon. I mean, we have so many things that they haven't touched yet. I know a lot of people were mad when the second release from the series featured the current lineup, but you gotta think that was the Rock the Nation tour which featured a lot of unique songs. It seems like they are really trying to pick shows and tours that are not run-of-the-mill, so to speak. So, what do we have left after this? Well, there's there's quite a bit. Of course, there's a show with uh, Bruce and Eric Carr on it. That, that would be amazing. I really, really would love that. Hot in the Shade would be the dream, of course. And then after that, we could get something from Revenge to have Bruce and Eric Singer on it. Uh, from there, 70 shows are always going to be good. We could have something from the early days, something from Destroyer. It doesn't really matter. Anything from the 70s is going to do well and it's going to be appreciated. We also need a show with Eric Carr and uh, Ace on it from the Unmasked Tour. That would be phenomenal to get. Uh, I know we have the Creatures box set, but I would still be down for a completely full, unedited show from the Creatures tour. We have, you know, basically that on the box set, but it's kind of spliced together, so if they could put something together as a package, that would be really great. Uh, I'm sure more people would be very okay with more reunion shows or the Psycho Circus tour, even the Farewell tour. So there's a lot left in the KISS canon. There's a lot of legs on this uh, floating KISS ship <laughs> ready to go. I really hope these releases continue for quite a while and I really hope this one is a sign of crazy stuff to come. I mean I'd even be okay with a Crazy Nights tour even though that might be my least favorite KISS record. And past the show of course there's a whole slew of merchandise coming out with this release. The one thing I find interesting and kind of awful about the merch that's coming out with it is the fact that they're only featuring Gene and Paul on it. There's a poster for the show, which is kind of awesome, but it just has Gene and Paul on it. They're putting out trading cards for the show, just Gene and Paul on them. They're putting out guitar picks from the show, but it has the makeup on it, and this is an out of makeup show, so I don't really understand what that is outside of just being lazy and them recoloring the same guitar picks for the fifth time at this point. Uh, that being said, you don't have to worry about consuming all that stuff. You can just get the CD or get the record or just listen to it on Spotify or Apple Music. So I think that stuff, it's nice for the people that want it. I gotta be honest, I might pick up the poster even with it just having Gene and Paul on it because how often do you see non-makeup merchandise from the band? Especially in 2023, that's crazy. Get out of here. What if they put out a revenge set like this that actually featured all four of them on the posters and such? I, I don't know why they're just featuring Gene and Paul. That's just interesting to me because the posters and such for the other sets featured all the members. The only thing I can figure on that is that the representation of the other members is more the representation of the makeup on the others and since these are real life people without the makeup, maybe they think they don't have the rights to it or maybe they don't have the rights, I don't know. I don't know anything about that so I probably sound like an idiot right now and that's, that's perfectly fine because I am but I just don't know why they didn't include Mark and Eric on the poster. That's just, that's really weird. I would have almost just made a poster like the shirts they have that just don't have any of the guys on them and settled at that myself. But uh, it is what it is. Kiss, you know, they do things to get people talking and here we are talking about it. And that's really all I have to say about this product that I'm excited to check out. So what do all of you think out there? Are you gonna pick this up? Are you gonna get the colored version of the vinyl? Are you gonna get the regular vinyl, the CD? Maybe you're just going to stream it. Maybe you're just gonna get the poster that I mentioned. Let me know all of that and more in the comments below. If you are new around here, make sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and all those other things that every YouTuber has ever told you to do. Once again, my name is Kimchi Chris and I will see all of you on the next episode.